live action here for episode 42 of the Knockoff Podcast. Chris, Danny and Briss on deck as always. We're just on the uh, television screen in front of us now, we've just watched a, uh, an SBS news piece related to this week with the uh, issue of a bill to get medicinal uh, cannabis past the Senate. Exactly. And, and, and what a, an absolute, really an outrage that it is, you know, still at that sort of stage of people that need access to it cannot have access to it. And, you know, people who are in really, really serious pain and stuff like that have to pretty much go through a couple of different medical screenings and all sorts of stuff to get it, which should be way more widely, you know, provided than that, surely. Yeah, they threw up some stats there, didn't they, of like... Uh the categories of what you qualify to to get the medical cannabis are like terminally ill in a, a number of different ways, like suffering really, really fucking badly. And the fact that we say that like, no, 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 this is this is illegal mm. for those people. I think anything is is you know anything is on. I think they have like medicinal cocaine and MDMA and stuff like that legally prescribed for medical benefits in in australia maybe i don't know in in, a, in the states they in do the man states, you yeah. can absolutely get you know prescribed mdma and and all that sort of stuff through actual specialists can mm. sort of prescribe that now mm. and psilocybin and all that sort of stuff i think yeah. they might be doing experiments with that as well so yeah. you know it, it just shows you that nature dishes it up you know like in one form or another you know all the compounds that they're, you know, that they effectively make mm. are from things that really just existed in nature to begin with, anyway. That's so right. To see a uh, to see a mother dealing with her child having up to a dozen seizures every sing- single day, having to deal with that day in day out, when a simple oil from a plant that grows out of the ground can bring one hundred percent relief from that. Mm. The fact that it's not here is. Just a no-brainer. Good on the people that are pushing it. I hope they're successful. Some think there is going to be some pushback, as always. But yeah, I think shit. it's um uh, like without getting too deep into the politics of it, it's it's been passed through the Senate, but it is likely to be rejected by the federal government. And I guess it's just you know it's it's hard when stuff is tied up with a recreational usage but it just in 2017 it really doesn't make sense anymore you know i follow this account on instagram called drunk people doing things i follow that too (sighs) man and the shit that people do when they're drunk that you know endangers their lives and other people's lives and outrageous fucking shit to think that you know we we class other drugs in different categories i don't know it just it seems like a really archaic idea and I don't know, man. I think I think the wheels are in motion, you know, like good on the Greens for getting this up, Richard Di Natale. And, you know, for me, uh, I, I don't even, you know, I don't swing left or right at all. It's like I'll go to, I'll go to vote and I'll vote for the Greens on the basis that I know the Greens aren't going to get up. But the fact that I want to have something other than a two-party system, you know, and I, and I want, you know, as much as I feel like the Greens probably don't have the ability to run the country, I want them and their views to have, have more, more power. have more swing in that whole sort of system of politics. It's just like... And that's why you vote, isn't it? And that's why exactly. you get to weigh out your options on your voting too. Like you give people a one and a two and a three yeah. and a four yeah. and a five like based on rating, you know, because, yeah, you, it's your own little, you know, contribution to steering the ship, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, exactly. And it seems like... I guess I guess one vote doesn't matter, you know, but it'll it'll happen. It's, it's a social tide, you know. Social change just continues to sort of happen, and I think we are sort of starting to see that now. Like a couple of potties ago, we discussed the the gay marriage vote, and you know, this this is along those same lines. I think it's just some of that some of that hangover from the past that I think we're mm. ready to move past and now. You know, especially when Australia sees examples of it done successfully and and so many examples of it actually done successfully all over the world it gives starts to give clout to you know all the multi-benefits of you know reducing crime and you know creating revenue and creating income and you know that there's local economies through you know colorado and all those sort of places that in california that's you know It'd be in the billions, put it that mm. way. Billions of dollars of revenue for, you know, the, the Californian government you know, to, to tax. I mean, what else can you create a billion, you know, dollar industry for overnight 
that hurts nobody effectively, helps many, you know, and, and just, you know, reduces crime. It's just a no-brainer. But Yeah, it's like uh, I guess I guess it will happen eventually because we've seen the successful model in the States now. Like exactly. we've seen the things that you're talking about. So Why isn't our government out here cashing in? It turned over yeah, like so yeah. many bill over there last year and they're pumping it back into public schools in Colorado and yeah and I, the, and I, the, I feel and the Australian like government's 500 like million dollars in debt probably if I think it's even more than that 500 mil now, ought to be more 500, 500 yeah. sorry 500 like trillion or something yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. something <laughs> incredible but what is that? No, it's five hundred billion, man. I'm somewhere in between. Yeah. What um, What is five hundred billion, though? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's such crazy. An astronomical the, the, the economics what's a, of what's that. What's a billion like? A thousand million. A thousand yeah. million. Yeah. yeah. Thousand million. So you're talking like five hundred thousand mm. million or what? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Yeah. Not yeah. capable Mind of that blind. number. Yeah. 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 Shout out to uh, Stu from the Batchy with his half a billy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> He's you worth five hundred mil. He went on an episode last night. This. Uh, millionaire that's on the Bachelor. He's come in the Intruder, and he's like dollar thirty on sports bet, like straight up because he's got a background and a profile already. Where he's like heir to this um, pub fortune, like pubs and hotels in um, New South Wales. He's heir to this huge fortune, and um, she knows him. Obviously, uh, she knew him before yeah. from some like VIP party or whatever. Yeah, where so, he tried to tune her. Uh, yeah, so he's the like, yeah, is, like, he's so like, come so on, uh, come on, my boat. Like after he'd met her, and she's like, yeah, yeah okay, and she ended up standing him up because she's like, I thought he was a bit of a douchebag. And uh, so the last night he's like, I'm on the show, I'm, press- I'm through to the semifinals. She stood me up on my boat once, he's not going to do it again. Like, and then there's this fucking super yacht like parked down at the side of like Sydney Harbour. <laughs> They're just out the back eating seafood, drinking wine, and she's like, this is all over. <laughs> like, uh, like, and mate, it's his this boat. It's yeah, his yeah, fucking it was boat. His own, yeah. All of these other dudes, like they, it, they, it, their turn to you know hold a date they'll, or whatever. They'll go to like, a petting zoo and shit. So it's like you know, <laughs> exactly like you're the contestant, and it's like the producers go, okay, here's here's the budget that you have. You can do fucking hang gliding, roller skating, mm. like what, what's what's yeah. your pick, sort of thing. And and you just go along with the shitty Channel Ten date. Mm. He's fucking stew with his own boat. <laughs> like he had his own fucking <laughs> giant yacht. That it's just like that's incredible. Eh? Game Some, over. Game over. It's all over, folks. And, and there be there's people out there that would make his money look like you know infant would money. Dwarf you know, that. imagine being one of those like chic princes or or something like that, where you're just worth. Hundreds of billions of dollars yeah, and yeah. shitting on gold toilets. It'd get to a point where it didn't make sense anymore. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just yeah. like, you know, all of your needs were ever taken care of, mm. but you, I think you'd be bored and unenthusiastic. Yeah, because it, especially, you know? you know, when you think about expanding the shit out of your living space, you can only live in so much area, you know? So, like, you, if you had this enormous, like, 16-bedroom house or something like Mike Tyson had, you know, back in yeah. his heyday when he was just hemorrhaging cash yeah. um being taken advantage yeah, of yeah you'd, you'd literally like chill in your your movie theater and your kitchen and you know like maybe a living room but there'd be so many fucking bedrooms and hallways yeah. and you know and everything and pool areas and you know bowling alleys and stuff like that that you'd never go in mm. you know you'd probably never touch them i was like floyd you pointed out how he's always in his house by himself and shit like that rattling but, uh, around like a r- rattling around it just yeah i, I think you should Although he posted that thing of him hitting a bag yeah. just recently. I know. wonder if that's something cryptic about back in training. Surely Pro- not. Probably not. <laughs> I hope not. Nah, I hope not. Me, me too. What, why is 52 and 0 or whatever? What is he? 50 51 and 0. 51 exactly. and 0. Yeah, yeah. 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 It doesn't make sense, does so it? It's like, what a, where stop? Unless he does need it. Unless it's, mate, unless it's the right match up. He's smart in the ones that he chooses. Mm. I don't think he'd have gone maybe gone for that 50 if he had to fight a Canelo or a Golovkin or mm. any of those names that they were yeah. talking oh, about. He wouldn't have having him to come back for that big money fight. Mm. He wouldn't have. I think it kind of goes to, you know, what you're saying about money and just being getting to that point where you just become bored with it, you know. I think human beings need we need something to do, you know. I think mm. if we were just in leisure mode all the, all the time, we'd get bored. We yeah. we sort of thrive off like having something to do, and I think you know if you go if you go camping, it's kind of exemplified because you're like, oh, what are we actually doing here? Like, are we just sitting in a chair in a bush? Like, oh no, we need to make a fire, or we need to cook dinner, or do this, or whatever. Like, and you know, you find that fulfilling, and I think human beings are naturally 
we're like worker bees, you know, or ants. We're, we're drives, designed yeah. to continue working. So if you get to the point where you're Floyd and you've just got all the fucking money in the world, it's kind of like, well, yeah, maybe I do want to take a fight, you know. Give me something to do. That's like, true. Give me something to work for, whether it's starting a strip club or taking a fight or whatever it and may it be. W- you need to do shit, you know. It mm. would be addictive, that fight game too. Being Floyd Mayweather, fight yeah. camp, coming out onto those scales, like six-pack ripped, just, you know, like with people screaming your name and stuff. That so would be heroin in, gonna, that, in that uh, moment. Oh, man. Imagine, imagine being him in the whole Conor McGregor situation where those press conferences were unprecedented. Absolutely. And he, you know, was not the not the one that everyone was cheering for in a lot of instances. Ah, not at and, all. Um, the way that the story went was that he fucking won, man. And he gets to say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I won, you know. Yeah, yep. and, I stopped and him. Stopped him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's big some statement. heroin shit right there. Oh, like, imagine that, you know. Yeah. Talk, oh, to, talk big game, man, but yeah. on fight night, I knocked you out. It would be yeah. impossible yeah. not to believe your own hype in that instance, you know. You'd yeah. be like, I am a god. Exactly. <laughs> and they, 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 would, they would both yeah. go in with that sort of mindset. Yeah. Which is crazy. They would yeah. both go in, you know, like with that I am a God mindset yeah. and I'm just going to humiliate this guy. He doesn't know what he's in for. Speaking yeah. of gods, man, the son of God, it's back to the cattery in the uh, AFL, right. AFL, right. AFL news yes. right there. Gary Ablett Jr. traded from Gold Coast Suns to going home where from where he belonged, you know, a triple premiership player. Brownlow medalist. Like, I don't know if he did. Gary Ablett get a Norm Smith. I don't know. I, I think I'd, he did. I'd, yeah, I'd, I saw, I'd have to. I'd have to. Yeah, today. I'd, be, I'd believe it. So. Mate, there will be some awesome. happy fucking people in Geelong tonight, that's for sure. Shout out. Shout out and to a couple been, of our family friends. Yeah, are, uh, shout out the cookies. He's been pretty unhappy at the Suns for a fair while now, like at least a couple of seasons, yep. hasn't it been? Came up, came up here, got, got an offer he couldn't refuse, essentially, you know what I mean? To move up here, he would have been on big cash coming up here and yeah. his whole contract would have been big, so yep. good on him. Hopefully he'll finish off, but that's good for Geelong. Like They're midfield now, Selwood, Ablett, Dangerfield. How old is he? Together. He'd be in 33. 30, yeah, 33. 33. Yeah, so yeah. come and play a couple more years anyway. Yeah, you could probably go another two. Isn't it funny he how the... that bad shoulder injury. Right. That's what right. they reckon. Yeah. I read something today that was saying he sort of hasn't had the same zip ever since that. And it's kind of like, you know, the body gets to that age yeah. and it starts being like, ooh, this is tough fucking yeah, going. Definitely. I told you boys the other week... Um, Across from the Village Green Studios, the Toomble Bulls and um, what are the AFL team that play across there? It's an AFL field slash um, fucking cricket field anyway. Shout out Chris Lynn, yeah. Toomble Bulls. Shout out. Pride. Signed a really big deal today, the biggest deal in BBL history. Yeah, five-year five extension with the Brisbane Heat. Well uh, done. Shit, n- knockoff alumni. Yeah. yeah. Chris well Lynn, San- Lynn Sanity. Good job. But yeah, and uh, I was walking past there the other day and there was like a whole bunch of dead set what looked like 16, maybe 17-year-olds, like probably two teams worth doing a training run AFL but game spec, you know, when you when it's like, okay, we'll split into two and go against each other. Situational shit. Not, not, you know, not as hard as you're going to go on Saturday, but fucking... 70. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. 70%. And, um, these fucking dudes running around the field, man. I was like, I, I'm 29, and if I ran out there, I was like, I would have to have my fucking, you know, game face. I would have on. to have some air in my lungs running out there, you know. Fucking, it was, it was fast and oh and yeah, good hits. And like you imagine running out at um, going down and playing a game of like reserve grade at North or something. Mate, now. I reckon it, within Ooh. ten within ten minutes, you'd be really, really tired. Oh, oh, nice, man, absolutely. within fucking a minute and a yeah, half. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. At that pace, exactly. It would be exactly. so intense. Yeah, you yeah. take one big hit up and and then do one tackle. Wow. Even even yeah. just if you were out getting on the wing back, trying to keep up with meters. the play, yeah, getting, getting back, back ten meters, getting back your ten in the league, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's match fitness that takes a while to accrue. You know. It, it's funny though that every sport takes a lot of repetition like that. You know, you need to build that fitness that you can't get any other way other than doing that discipline, you know. Mm. So like s- s- paddling a surfboard is a perfect example of that. You can swim all you want, but if you still get on a surfboard and because you change yes. your neck position and you, you know, you paddle upright that way, your shoulders still gas out, your triceps yeah. mm. still cramp up, your, you know, your de- rear delts still cramp up, you know, like... It Do just you reckon, like, you know how you see, um, like, the Hurley performance centres and shit like that? Do you reckon surfers, they would have a training regime where they have shit that can increase your paddling, paddling fitness and shit like that without oh. actually being in the water? I'm sure their programs and stuff would be very different to other mm. training methods, you know, because it's a very specific thing. Like, you're not trying to, like... 
hypertrophy and build muscle at all. You're trying to, you know, be elastic, mobile yeah. in certain ways. You know, mm. exactly. All those dudes are uh, super flexible, super and limbo. Uh, yeah, yeah good, exactly. Great balance and yeah. foot strength oh. and shit. All those guys. It's incredible when you see the guys like John John Florence and, and, and girls. You should say and probably. girls. Yeah, Women's absolutely. surfing has come fucking Ridiculous. leaps and bounds way. in the last. That's uh, what do you reckon? Ten years. Ten years, man. Yeah. Look, women surfing. You're right. Has just gone Insane. in leaps and bounds yep. since. Shout you know, out since, when Lane, since Lane, Lane Beachley. Man, she Shout out Lane Beachley. Like, Lane, like, Lane yeah. started it, but yeah. Lane was still, you know, like really stiff, sort of stiff. Ish, you know, like I mean, compared you to you can't these fuck days with Lane though. She, yeah. what, she's such a pioneer that she has to be in that fucking goat goat conversation. Yeah. Well, she went won six world titles. That's so right. exactly, but I think that's, that's been beaten, hasn't it? Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty right. sure Correct. someone. Carissa Moore. Carissa uh, Moore or something. I'm like that? pretty sure so, a woman's beat, beaten that amount of world titles in women's surfing. I could be wrong, but Lane would definitely be. You're absolutely right up there in the, in the conversation of great of greatest of all time in women's surfing for sure. We're just looking it up on the uh, on the Google at the on moment. The Tricaster. But yeah, I was only actually saying to um, to my dad earlier before uh, before I got here. Look up the list in uh, women's history, um, Danny. How much um, how much we've got to get a professional surfer on here? So mm. we'll, let, we'll we'll absolutely have to go mobile and uh, and take this down the Goldie because we want to get like. Would it have been the WSL when she was surfing though? But even like it'll probably have that back in the archives and stuff. Nah, that wouldn't have the. Steph Gilmore, there you go. Boom, yeah, there shout you go. out, there Steph you Gilmore. Go. Of course, how did I? Yeah, yeah, how did I not remember that? Yeah, Steph Gilmore, goat, killed, goat. How many she got? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lane with six as well. Oh, so it's tie. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, who won 15, 16, 17? Um, well, that's when it went to the WSL. Yeah, it would have been like Carissa Moore. See, that that's what Kelly Slater was. Kelly Slater was just an athlete ahead of his time. So, you know, mm. like he, he just evolved to a, a level in the sport that nobody else could catch up to a lot earlier. Mm. So it's no different from, you know, your – your superior athletes that go on, you know, long winning streaks because they are just at that point in time so much better than everybody else. It's just, especially in such a competitive sport too. Mm. You know, it's not like surfing was new at the time or anything like that. Mm. You know, it was well and truly established but by the time Kelly oh, Slater started. Man, you can't fuck with Slater. He still competes like on I mean. that scale really fucking well, you know. Mm. You can't sort of say that he – that. Time, like you know, Father Time's caught up with Kelly Slater at all. all. That, you know, generations have passed him by. You know, no, <laughs> it just yeah. fucking yeah. hasn't yeah. happened, Mate, man. He's Kelly still Slater there. could win a world title, yeah. easily, <laughs> exactly. easily, man, and and still yeah. wins events. You know, like one one chopes or something like that in recent recent history. I'd love love to see Kelly Slater win another world title and go out on the and, world uh, title. That'd Gabriel be awesome. Gabriel Medina had just won recently in France in some really fucking good waves. In yeah, that, uh, France looked incredible, didn't it? Did, never. Just big though. Like yeah, it was yeah, definitely a – is that a beachy? Yeah, mate. Right. Yep, you betcha. Right. God damn. Yeah, monster. So yeah. they go to there and then they go to Super Tubes like straight after that. They go from France right. to Portugal. Like, yeah. How's the life on these guys? Oh, man? absolutely, man. And and why not? You'd, you'd absolutely want to live it up while you could. Uh, you know who uh, – Lots the, of Brazilians uh, in the top ten now. Massively. Yeah. I really like uh, – Owen Wright, man, I've in, enjoyed the shit out of his surfing career, man. I've always followed him. He came back from he's come back from a really bad injury, so yeah. good to see him there at fifth. Like he'll, I remember one year at watching him surf live at Chopu, and uh, and he was he had balls like going in on some of these waves. Uh, Owen Wright, <laughs> shout out, man. Just the, when you're watching one of those competitions where it is big and it is heavy, and you know, and you're seeing him take the drops that they take into the ways that they go into it it blows your mind because like you you know if you were out in the water paddling you know even out while someone was dropping into something like that you'd look at it and just be mind blown mm. that someone would be that you know committed to be dropping into that i mean like be, imagine being a john john florence and paddling into 
you know, 15 to 20 foot pipeline, you oh. know, like when it's just going dry on that reef and it's just but just know, train barrels. But no, but knowing how to surf it. it but knowing like, how to surf it. Because it's his backyard. Like yeah. he grew up on that beach. Like, yeah. oh, here we go. Oh, shit. This is a big one here, man. This yeah. is, oh, I'm going to get so pitted. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And just being so yeah. confident that he's just like, you know, like can stall to go through a, like a dry, jagged razor reef yeah. that's super shallow and just charge really heavy barrels. You it know? doesn't break far from the beach at all in hindsight. No. Man, there is like an outer reef that it comes through, but ha- having uh, like foot went and stood on that very spot like a couple of years back and I'm like, holy shit, like this is it. Like the beach isn't really even that big or deep like from like the houses yeah, to the sand and right. shit like that. You're oh, like, yeah. oh my God, like. And it was only, it would have only been like three foot or something pretty sloppy yep. when I was there. Yep. A couple of people surfing, a few people on bodyboards and shit. And I'm like, no way in hell am I going to go and like just p- paddle out there right no, now. No, like, no. And, and you couldn't, you, I, I, rem- I remember even in the Endless Summer too, you know, like it, the the quote from like Robert August or whatever is, is like, if you think you're going to go out and dazzle someone here, you're uh, in for a very humbling yeah, experience. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. You know, because even back then when the, you know, the Jerry Lopez and, and all that sort of stuff were charging pipe on those mm. big heavy guns and all that sort of stuff, that was still a high level of surfing. They were still charging heavy, heavy waves. If you get hit on hit by the lip, it might permanently part your hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a, oh, I love That's those. That's a quote off that yeah, too. Yeah, Pass the big mole yeah. lady. Yeah. <laughs> that, that movie is what got me into surfing. Oh, absolutely, man. I'd, I'd love to watch that, man. It would be over a decade since I watched The Endless Summer, but uh, like, Endless it Summer was, too. It but, was... Um, Played in our house many a time. Oh, many yeah. a time. Man. Many a time. In the summer too, never the first one though. Yeah. Man, Pat um Pat O'Connell, like Pat O'Connell, that's his, um, right. Yeah. Getting his wetsuit eaten in that thing when they're in that dune buggy in that big game park is all time. Man. <laughs> that, Remember that man? There, dude, there's lines yeah. of getting into his yeah, wedding. And they're like, right. like just cruising through these little mountain ranges, like and he's just laughing, and then they just turn up to like J Bay and just start shredding. Yeah, yep. And How funny it, is it like uh, he was the little Grom in that thing. Yeah, he was. Yeah, if you like, see him now, all, he was still yeah. he's an yeah. old dude. Man. Yeah, 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 absolutely, man. And rips still, man. Really? Yeah, very good surfer, man. He was on the uh, he was on WSL up only until a couple of years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He is a good surfer, yeah. absolutely. And he is in those that movie. He mm. is in in the summer too. Yeah, you know, man. he's ripping. I love there. the dude. Uh, um, love the Costa Rica section of that. that yeah, that. wingnut Do they go to on Costa that. Rica? Uh, they go to Witch's Rock. That's and, right. Like Plan Negra and I might have to rewatch that. That's right. I think I remember that scene. Looks super. Fun too, like mm. Witches Rocks just offshore, and it's like, um, and the nearest parking meter is is eight hundred miles. There's away a there's a big like rock island behind in the shot. That's Witches Rock, right? That yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. You know, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's nice. the one. Yeah, exactly. But it's like apparently from you got to go from Tamarindo, which is a, like a um uh, a seaside village or something like that, and you and you pretty much just get on a boat, and then the boat takes you out to Witches Rock, but you can't camp there. Because um, the island is sort of protected or something, so you can only go out there for like on day trips. Costa Rica. Yeah, look up. Uh, um, and the summer. Is it on look. the? Uh, is it on the uh, Pacific or the I uh, don't, Caribbean I don't, I don't side? Know. Los Pepe's. Yeah, I think it'd be Playa up around Playa, Playa Hermosa, but. Um, Pacifico Beach Club, that's us boys. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look how <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're on a looking at a Google Earth shot from above here too. We're just there in awe of the photos, not even describing what we're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at a, a, oh, at wow. a map, map of Costa Rica. Holy shit, that looks awesome. Ma- map like, of oh, Costa geez. Rica to find yeah. Go- uh, Google which is rock. Oh, you did. Which is rock high rope school, like zip lining. <laughs> like we're on the fucking zip lining website. Like, oh yeah, great. Just uh, reading it, yeah. not saying anything. Uh, oh shit. Uh, 35 US, oh, yeah, what do you know? And oh. <laughs> Podcast <laughs> gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that, that, that is the movie that got me into surfing at, mm. at 14. I remember my dad pretty much took me surfing initially, which I wish I'd have gotten into it, but when I would have been probably six or seven, like on this big fat single fin sort of thing, hated it because I got dumped and, you know, just dropped it until 14. Watched that in the Summer 2 movie one time, like early in the summer, and was just like, I want, I want to like get a surfboard for Christmas, and like got mum and dad to get me like a beach beat surfboard for Christmas, and then just like surf started right. surfing then. And I just saw on that um, the rankings before, 
Um, Stephanie Gilmore is she she currently first? Yeah, on uh, in that in the women's, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. look up look, look up which is rock in the summer too, but that that is some of the funnest surf looking uh, like yeah, f- surf footage you, you'll ever ever see because it's just really really sunny. It's just offshore. It's you know not super critical. It's just you know looks so so nice. I can't wait to go here. I cannot wait to go here. It's 10 foot. Oh, that, that's actually yeah, big, yeah, that looks bro. Like, that's yeah. big. Oh, that's so fun, though. Oh, oh man. Wow. This isn't in the summer. This no, is just, this is no, some this is just somebody, this, somebody this who's is gone there. There's some guys who scored. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this exactly. Big, this is some... Holy shit. That is a, it's a freight train left. Yeah. Look at that longboard in there. Oh, oh, get out of the way, that. Yeah, yeah. Look at that left. Just rifling off. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. But yeah, big, big. You definitely want a sizable surfboard to uh, paddle into that. This is the end of summer, end of summer too scene, I think. Yeah, yeah this is oh, it. Oh, wow. That's it. Oh, look how grainy the footage is because it's like shot back in the... This would be 90s. Looks good as surfing as he did at 18. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks like really noose. Yeah, just... Wingnut was the longboarder. Oh, yeah, he ripped. Yeah, he mate. fucking ripped yeah. the longboard. Yeah, exactly. Is he still kicking? He'd yeah. be still yeah, kicking, for man. Sure, yeah, man. absolutely. Still surfing? Yeah, yeah they're getting uh, lefts there. Hey, that looks like DI, man. If that was really? D- if you're gonna yeah, get that yeah. rainbow side of DI or whatever right. on the, on a good day, man, you get long lines yeah, like that. They're man. all right, yeah. I thought there were some lefts in here. Maybe it's the next spot spot. I remember it being sunny. But that just looks and they've got it to themselves. It's just like it's literally yeah, just them. Game game game. Yeah, game. And, and it is like, It is Absolutely it is Look at that That looks like absolutely. Kelly's machine right there No like, one out yeah. Yeah, no, no one out except them Just them You and your friends That's it Look at that Look at that inside mate. Section. You have to run it back yeah. up the beach there man. That's Yeah like Such would. a long paddle You're To wing right. that back You absolutely would You'd have to run back up the beach When you get like What way is that long <laughs> The surf was gangbusters And Pat was ripping <laughs> <laughs> It's awesome, man. It's awesome. That's oh, old absolutely. school. And you would have watched that on VHS. Yeah. yeah. Was that exactly. a uh, was that a Harvey Weinstein movie? Was he, <laughs> was he, around, was he around then? Jeez, <laughs> uh, what a what a creeper he turned out to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny well, yeah. how like people come out. Obviously Bill Cosby's way worse, but yeah. it just takes one it just takes one person to um to say something, doesn't it, before the floodgate opened. It was similar to to what Bill Cosby did, but yeah, Bill Cosby to me is still is another kind of monster. Yeah, you know definitely, I mean? definitely. Is, Rapes a whole different yeah, box that's of that's right. But it, uh, Har- but Harvey yeah, is so Harvey is quantify uh, what is rape. He's, yeah, he's Harvey has of a whole yeah. bunch of shit that he, fucking there's accusa- as, yeah, yeah, there's a- accusations of him being just as bad as well. So yeah, right, let's potentially see what happens here. But just that crazy sort of Hollywood power and wealth and using it to allegedly. Like manipulate people for roles, like yeah. If you if you bang him, you'll uh, yeah, exactly. You'll get a couple more scenes and shit. I can and and all the, all the people around him, sort of you know, supporting him in obviously doing that. Mm. You know, so the people oh, you know, right. reception or his you know staff effectively like leaving the room and setting chicks up with him and shit. But Surely that can't be right. It says Harvey Weinstein's net worth is estimated to be between two forty and three hundred million. Easily, man. He's not even worth fucking stew off the Bachelors. Status, yeah. Oh, but that, that, oh, really? Nah, <laughs> really? How much did you say, Stu, from the Bachelor's? They said 500. 500. 500 million. Yeah. That's a serious whether that, amount of whether James that, Hetfield's back. Yeah, whether yeah, that, really? That's is he worth 500 s- million? Serious yeah. amount or Metallica, of money. yeah. Metallica. Oh, bro, that's a serious yeah. amount. Well, like you boys half said, half a billy, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, half a billy, yeah. Those are numbers that just don't compute, eh? exactly. Yeah, you, know, you know, you you could be literally buying a new car every day if you yeah. wanted to, you know. So, uh, the fuck you money. Mm. That's what they call that. You know what you I mean? You could use cars like socks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, ne- never wearing t shirts twice and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Give, give me 40 white tees. Like. Although you probably could go, you could ease, you could go broke at any level of money. Definitely. But, you know, like Floyd Mayweather could go broke. He's mm. the sort of guy, a guy that, you know, would somehow manage to do it. That's mm. it. I'd, I'd, uh, you just get so bored that you'd just be spending. Like, yeah. I saw that. Uh, there was that doco on Michael Jackson just before he, maybe not just before he died, that, that, 
This Is It one or whatever, but a few before that, he did this doco where they were following him around for a day and he was like fucking just going into these antique stores and buying like multi-million dollar vases mm. and forgetting completely about them and shit like that. Yeah. You just become so detached to it, I reckon. Absolutely. Eh? You just be like... Yeah, definitely. Especially if you were... Weird a, existence. A, a, a guy like Michael Jackson who got real weirded out by fame. You know, I think that some people seem to handle it better than mm. others, but it would be... Cir- circumstances, I think, play a huge fact, you know? The fact that he was essentially like fucking a child abused but thrust into the fucking limelight... By his parents. At such and, yeah. a young age, yeah. man. All of his family Fucking were. blowing up before you've even hit puberty, man. Like yeah. extremely yeah. fucking popular. You just... you At 40, there's no way you couldn't be a weirdo, mm. I reckon. There's no way that you could be like, mm. well, I've handled this fame better, like, yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm very well grounded and shit like that. You haven't had, like, a single second to become grounded exactly. ever. Exactly, yeah. And that's it. You're you're a product of your experiences and and all that sort of stuff. I was only having this conversation the other day about that. It's it's interesting that two people can effectively just have through different DNA and wiring and and all that sort of stuff can have an entirely different mindset on you know two different things. That everybody is whether it's through a little bit of looks or a little bit of personality or a little bit of something else. No two people in seven billion people are like identical sort of thing in the mm. way that they think and the way they look and like that hasn't been the same model hasn't been copied twice it's such a trip out mm. yeah i think when you're on this this micro level you you notice the changes it's like to ants to us all look the same but i wonder if to ants they they have like subtle differences between each other and shit like yeah, that yeah you know? i wonder because mm. wonder fuck i rewatched. um only like I was just killing some time. The first fifteen minutes of the Neil deGrasse Tyson Cosmos one, and they start out by giving the Earth's address or whatever. So it's like if Planet Earth is the first line of the address, then they show you how big that that yeah. is within our solar system. The solar system is the second line, and then that's within the local group, which is like, and and by the time you get out and you see what Earth is, this tiny speck on the edge of Milky Way, that's like one of many of these big clusters of galaxies and shit, you're just like, we are so fucking small and trivial and do not matter in the fucking grand Mm. scheme of things. You just can't get your head around the fact that this shit is expanding. It's like there's Mm. no end to it and it's like incomprehensibly big. Yeah, it is. That big doesn't even quantify it. Yeah, that's it. Like you just said, that's a good way to describe it, incomprehensibly big. And so from, from that lens... You know, we are all the same. We're we're essentially all connected. You know, we're just this teeming mass on a rock. But it's cool. <laughs> but it's cool being part of that evolutionary species that you are. You know, at intelli- that macro level, and yeah, you're like, absolutely. you know, you, you're like creating art and fucking sitting yeah. here having a podcast and exactly, you know, and taking life and te- seriously. Well, hopefully not too seriously, but having fun with it. You and know, exactly, and just get moving forward and getting smarter and Mm. figuring new things out and then being like, hang on, if we put these sensors in this and train people in doing this and build up this industry, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, robots that do Mm. this and, you know. Yeah, and it's funny when you really think about it from that level, it's like what are we actually doing? What are we actually sort of running about scurrying across this rock like trying to figure out and trying to solve, you know. But to us it is the ultimate everything you it's know part of evolution exactly of we, evolution. we just have this like ingrained thing where we're going to operate you know we're going to operate for a certain amount of time and procreate and keep going and just keep this it's it's like this hive that we don't really realize we're a part of we all think we're in like our separate lanes and we're just like i'm just doing me and i'm fucking you know grinding and getting these getting this cash to set my family up but we really don't see that like we're we're just inseparable from this bigger thing that's going on like if if we are individual, then then like absolutely, what is the point? You know, it's kind of there is there is no point to it. But imagine it's, it's just imagine, like concepts you can't get. When you see these like lone wolves out there and shit. Imagine like. being alive, like within your lifetime, and on a regular day that you or you know like it probably more than likely happen over a week, but you got hit like by one of those style asteroids that hit off hit the half the land and, you know, half the co- coast of Mexico, which pretty much, like, wiped out the dinosaurs of that era. Mm. You know, imagine being around for something of that magnitude, you know, like where it was just, like, effectively someone just set off a nuclear bomb, you know, like, yeah. in your boom. hole. start again. Boom, start yeah. again, exactly, yeah. Huge, like, 
plumes of, of dust that pretty much block out the sun from even, you know, mm. accessing the plants on earth and all the plants on earth start dying and this, you know, holocaust dust that just blocks out sun for just, you know, mi- hundreds mm. of millions of years before life starts to come back again yeah. and shit, you know? It's like fucking Jeff Goldblum 101, like boom. fucking Jurassic yeah. Park, life finds a way. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. it fucking does, man. It fucking mm. does. It's so trippy from, you know, if that were to happen, if we tomorrow got hit by a fucking asteroid, eventually some fucking algae would start creating and then, you know, primordial fucking soup and before you know it, you've got like... These crazy monkeys running around with Apple Watches and yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's fucking it it's is. bizarro, man. And and you know, you kinda have to pinch yourself sometimes when you think like, fuck man, if you if you are having tough times or have, having, you know, going through some shit in your head, go out and look at the stars and it's like, Oh yeah, that's right. Fucking we are so fucking small, you know? Like so it's just like don't take your shit too seriously and just enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the the perfect attitude to have on it is you got to, you know, enjoy it while you're here. And, yeah, and I think doing shit is what makes us happy. Exactly. Yeah? Like, and that's it. You just got to find your own vibe. And I think that getting older allows you to find that vibe though because when you're young, you experiment with heaps of different stuff and you try that and you're like, oh, you know, I like that or I like hanging out with these people or, you know, I feel good in this environment or whatever. And then you slowly just put the pieces together of what you actually like as a human being and then you just focus your attention on those things and then you start doing those things all the time mm. then you're like oh yeah actually this is pretty sweet like i've got yeah. this how i want it and i think as well you know life just goes on and eventually you might shed those interests and you might move into a different phase and you know you get older and that's the crazy thing about life and about humans we're constantly in this process of like call it growth or call it decay but it's kind of the same thing we're like you know moving closer to an eventual end so we're Mm. sort of changing constantly ourselves and reproducing our like i i look at my skin now and i'm like fuck my skin's getting older and shit you Mm. know yep i look at my hair and 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 a few grays start coming through and you're like oh that's that's miles on the clock you know that exactly add up yep absolutely you're just expiring day by day (laughs) and it's a depressing (laughs) thought we we won't go we won't go there but no but i don't don't know like that i think that's that's that whole sort of buddhist philosophy towards death is Maybe it's not a depressing thing. Maybe death is in inherently as much a part of life as as birth is, you know. Yeah. And, and it's that's that's the seasons of our life, and it's this this crazy the whole experience. You know, the experience of life wouldn't be so special if we didn't die at the end. You know, we'd 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 be like, oh, well, this just goes on forever. So like, good. It's a, that's know? a f- but, interesting. But because we know it. it's limited, it's like. Fuck, we better make the most of I'd, this. We I'd, better dance while we're here. You know, I'd still opt in if there was an option in the future that you could you know, purchase something or or do cer- certain something that would make you live forever, would you do it? Or would you choose to expire? You'd choose to live on. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there's so many questions that, you know, you'd need to qualify first in terms of what's the quality of yeah. life. Like, do you just become... You know, completely <laughs> a, br- a, a brain in a jar. Just, like. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some boys. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's noisy in here, uh, boys. <laughs> like the Frankenstein movies of the like the eighties and oh, stuff. Like that's yeah. a, well, that's the it's alive. Yeah, alive. That's the t- I think they'd be dealing with way smarter technology. I yeah. can in if you talk about when we're. You know, 80 and 90 years old, that's, you know, 60 odd years in the future. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of ever, a lot of growth and a lot of, you know, time to yeah, improve. That'd be your uh, flying work. car spec, like, te- yeah. like automated technology, Na- everything. Nail on like. the head. I think, I think biological evolution, no, that's not a very long period of time, but technological evolution, absolutely. Exactly. It's and uh, the fucking, um, that show Black Mirror, do, do an episode that fucking really hits the nail on the head with potentially what will happen is if they are able to, from all of your data and all of your photos and tweets and everything, build a digital consciousness of, you know, Chris or Maddie yeah. or Danny sort of thing and sort of, you know, this non, non sort of feeling virtual reality that, you know, you could implant into your head into a, into a chip, say, and from that you could essentially be yourself like in you know have you worn any of those um virtual reality nah. head, headphones and nah. shit um fuck, i'd like it? to I'm, yeah I'm me like, too but maybe not yet i want to try it when it's real good like ridiculous yeah I, 
Although I guess if you have never seen it, I suppose you don't mm. know what to expect. That's it might true. it might blow your See, mind. I'm a bit picky with the graphics and shit that they've got for it yet. Like that's a boxing simulator one there that you're seeing below that. Where if you go and get your uh, PlayStation 4 out now, I mean the graphics would absolutely shit all over that. Really? So oh, I, okay. I don't want to yep. go to that experience and be like, man, this looks pretty lame. Like oh, it, it's cool, okay, but it's yeah. still this is like early two thousand yeah, spec video right. game we're, type. We're thing. at right. fucking Nintendo sixty four right here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> when we need that ten eighty p. Yeah. Right. But this, um, yeah. see, look at the graphics, oh, man. Oh, that shit. That looks fucking rank, man. I mean, hats off to them because it's an amazing thing that they've done. But mate, being in your lounge room, there, shadow boxing. <laughs> this you know? guy on the left is an actual boxer. Bit. Check out his chat. He starts getting really into it. <laughs> Holy smokes This virtual reality Boxing fight That we're watching Is uh, This boxer is lighting that Up their character terrible. Yeah, yeah. That looks terrible That doesn't even look like You know Like it would be Interest. I mean, I guess it would just be but like... yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's the stage that we're at now. Mm. But say, like, in however many years, if this has progressed to the point where that looks realistic as fuck and mm. you can go into this virtual world where um, essentially, like, you've you've downloaded this version of yourself that's, you know, you can play in the game as yourself or whatever. Against Floyd, like, you know yeah, what I mean? And, like, and build, they'll build an exact replica so of that. In, the, in this episode of Black Mirror, they basically give this to people when, you know, you're entering retirement home spec and if you're terminally ill, you can put this chip in your brain and you can choose to go into that virtual reality and they're like, you can suspend your consciousness indefinitely in this virtual reality if you so choose and they show this conundrum of a relationship where a woman has gone into the virtual reality but her husband has chosen to, to pass on and so she's now having a lesbian relationship with this other woman who's in the virtual reality but having these feelings of you know I lived 80 years of my life with it with anyway it's fucking yeah, no, I'm spoiler not, alert but yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't seen the doc uh, it's, it's a doco it, no 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 uh, it's, TV it's, episode. It's, a, t- oh. it's like a fictional show Black Mirror but they play with concepts of like Possibility. Due due possibility of social media and technology and shit in the not too distant future. Yeah, you know? exactly. And like different social sort of like problems that may arise from no, that. Yeah, there's a f- yeah. First episode, spoiler alert, is like there's a where the president or the prime minister gets blackmailed because there's a video of his daughter getting kidnapped and the ter- the terrorists like that are manipulating him make him root a pig on like national TV. <laughs> like, and, really? and they actually do it in the episode. Yeah. Like it is a. Wild television program, right? <laughs> really, it's really different. But I don't well, know. with graphic graphic footage of the root against on the pig. Pre- yeah, no, it's really? probably it's it wouldn't be R rated. It'd be like MA or something oh, okay. like but that. But him like it's crying still, and shit. Doing to be it. honest, yeah. like yeah. the um, imagine the, acting that that the day. acting yeah. the acting is a little little. It's it's a startup B ish grade, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, but if you suspend disbelief for a little while. Then this the story inevitably gets you because it's always sort of like you got to work out what's happening. It's a different sort of scenario at the start of each episode, but it's an interesting question, man. I, d- I don't know, like um, like li- live forever. I don't I don't know. It's um, it's an it, it, like you said. It depends on the condition that you do it in, but. Yeah. I'd definitely yeah. go. I'd definitely go for it. Imagine being fucking three hundred years old and communicating with a twenty three year old. Yeah. Fucking strange. Mm. If you just like look like you did at 23 and you're still there like banging all the young chicks at the club but you're really mm. 350 exactly. years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, and and like, it might get to that stage. But, probably, do, but does the brain like would you – there has to be a point where you stop learning. You wouldn't – I don't know. Do can, Is there a, like potential for the brain to be able to carry 300 years worth of experience? I mm. don't think so. I don't know. Evolution. <laughs> absolutely. That's how evolution is. It just picks up a little bit more. That's, you know, how like – Apes go from, you know, walking around on their fo- all fours to yeah. slight a bit upright over, you know, long, long, long periods of time. But yeah. Yeah. Fucking. It's a crazy concept. <laughs> what were we even talking about? Living oh, forever. Harvey Weinstein, Living forever. Yeah. 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 Living forever. Yeah. It would be, it would be tricky, but I can definitely see it as a, like being conceivable within our lifetime. Within 60 years, I think that, you know, that that's potentially something that. Human, like the human species. Yeah, they say to. that um, the first 150 year old person has been born now. Mm, yeah, I don't doubt it. But yeah, yeah. I, I honestly think though that you would get to a point, and if it's a virtual reality or if it's, you know, fucking full on science fiction that we can somehow become immortal, I think it, yeah, I think it takes some of the flavor away from life. I feel like 
I know what you're saying. Life is change and everything is, you know, money is good because you know what it's like not to have money. Exactly. Um, You know, friendship is good because you know what it's like to not not have it or, you know, relationship in general, like, versus being lonely. Um, Context. Whether it's friends, family, fucking Mm, relationships. Would you be elderly though or would you be out of food they tastes have. so fucking good cuz you know what it's like to be hungry it's like everything that has a has a you know it's like the yin and the yang thing you know everything that has a bright aspect to it kind of needs that dark aspect like what is happiness without sadness you yeah, know Yeah I mean? exactly so yeah it's yeah kind yeah. of that that whole comparison melting thing. pot and circle of of life is like all that pain and pleasure and fucking everything is all tied up in the one thing and I think if you take if you take that struggle away from it, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it, we'd find it as fulfilling because we're Exa- biologically no, designed. You definitely wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah we're, we're designed to do it the way that we do it, you know. But, yeah, it's it's obviously such a, a more rewarding thing to, to feel good. Like, so if you're, you know, away and you're doing something that you love and all that sort of stuff, it just feels way better than not, not feeling good. So you just want to feel like that m- way more often, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's it's fucking strange when you think about biology and you think about, you know, we, we've seen this week with this this transgender issue in sport that's come up, and it's and it's not a new issue, you know, it's it's something that's that's happened throughout, and and I think there there maybe is an issue with sport being, you know, we, we're categorizing gender into into two categories, and we we've sort of known now from science and evolution and everything that it's not necessarily like that, like. Um, is it the South African track and field athlete? Mm. Athlete, what's her name? Casta Semenya. Casta Semenya, and she was actually hermaphrodite, so had like testes on the inside, um, but like I don't, I don't know what other genitals. I guess a vagina. Yeah, you know? born with yeah. both. I believe. Probably both. Yeah. You know, so the fact that that exists, it makes it makes the issue like really, really complicated. And I think the IOC have standards for testing. Like apparently back in the day it was fucking rudimentary as like, you know, pull your ducks down and show us what you got. But I think now the model they use is based on hormones. Yeah, yeah, testosterone yeah. and estrogen levels. That makes sense. And um, even that though, like they're, they're saying, you know, isn't, isn't totally um con- conclusive yeah. but it's 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 a rife one you know because you do have this w- we saw in the in the news this week um Hannah Muncy something like that Hannah Muncy I think yeah the Australian um actually what like has had uh gender gender reassignment surgery I, I'm not sure if if it he or she has actually had the had the assignment surgery. Identifies as a woman now, but has um, played for the men's handball team for Australia as well. Um, began the transition to being a woman in 2015, and um, you know, from from an outsider's perspective, still visibly looks looks and sounds like a man, and and is quite you know large, and is um, eligible or ineligible for the the AFL Women's League um, draft. I- ineligible now. Ineligible. Like the, 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 the right, the correct decision was made. Yeah, it, I think it was, and the way that uh, she handled it afterwards, after she was declined, was. A one hundred percent class act. Like, let's get that on the record as well. Completely right. copped it on the chin and understood where this, uh, uh, even with gender reassignment surgery and hormones, you're only twenty four months into a course of a, a life of what like thirty years or something like that. Yeah, as a, a as a male, you're one hundred and ninety centimeters, a hundred kilograms, and oh. have played on an Australian athletic sports team. Oh, that's, she's that's massive. too that's too soon for mine to. To oh, go she, into to, to, pl- to play against women, there is potential for that, uh, absolutely, and I think that's why the the right call is made, especially in contact sports and things like that. Where you know, if a male went out there in a, a non-contact, like if a a guy had a gender reassignment here and ended wanted to go in the WSL in the women's division, something where there's no sort of physical contact, yeah, I think that's a yep. completely d- separate uh, separate entity all all to itself. Right, where yeah. in a contact sport where a, a man of thirty years can put his hands on a, on another woman is uh just a no go zone for mine. There'd mm. have to be I don't know how long it would take to get obviously, you know, ten years into her gender reassignment. Obviously her testosterone levels and stuff are gonna be a lot lower and the yeah. I think they'd have to probably set some pretty lofty standards with just to protect that. Like I mean Absolutely. going going in being a 
you know, mixed martial arts, for example, that Fallon Fox had done a gender reassignment and got, has gone and fought MMA. Where there's there's something something that doesn't sit right with me about that, where a bloke can just go uh, in transition and be and be going in there and hitting a woman in in the space of like a couple of years yeah. just on these tablets. You know, that that part is where I struggle with it. Mm. And it's not. Um, I think that contact thing is a really valid point in that whole mm-hmm. argument. I think that that really comes into it, and it is kind of. Fuck, how do, how do we proceed from this point onwards, you know? Because evolution is this runaway train and it seems that we're moving in this direction of, you know, we've seen in the last 10 years anyway, there's been a whole bunch of different, you know, sexual persuasions as well as gender identification, you know, names and titles and things come up. And whether, you know, a lot of that seems to be tied up in ideological movements of people you know the extreme left versus the extreme right and all that that sort of shit is definitely inherent in that in that whole context as well but yeah i don't know i think it's um i think it's a tricky issue like because you know how how do you quantify it like they've they on on the scientific level and the the chromosomes between men and women like men are like an xy what is it Men are an XY and women are a... Oh, I don't even know. X, X, X. Yeah, XX and XY. Um, but they've shown that there's like, you know, as much variations as XXY, like triple XY, quadruple XY, like... And it, and it sort of, you know, there's no real measure to quantify, okay, what actually makes a man and what actually oh, makes a woman. Oh, okay. But, you know, the... the Obviously certain physical characteristics... Mm. Yeah, at but, the but growth it, then level, yeah. yeah, in sport you have to exactly you have oh, to I consider that a man, you know, has like Bryce you saying thirty or even even fifteen years worth of, um, you know, elevated testosterone levels that build stronger bone density, more muscle mass, exactly. um, all all mm-hmm. that different sort of stuff. So if you then do choose to reassign yourself, like there needs to be you know some sort of standards in Mm. place but it is so like just from the little bit of reading that i've done on it since maddie sent me this article this week and and just reading some other stuff on the history of transgender in sport it's a fucking complicated issue i would not want to be an official or an adjudicator on like okay so how do we set the standards on this Mm. you know Mm. where where are we going where are we going man yeah gray area and there'd be a lot of that i think there'd be a lot of that in every level of decision making even in politics that you'd sort of just be like look we think this is the best way to go and then you you know, might get seven years down the track and go, ah, oh, that was such a mistake, mm. you know? Like, well, it's all, like it almost seems on sort of same grounds as the PED use, you know? Mm. It's sort of like, okay, so what are we classifying as performance enhancing and what are we not, you yeah. know? What's, what's in and what's out? And you've got to constantly keep evolving because they obviously keep coming up with different stuff. Mm. So you've almost got to be doing their job for them in the sense that figure, making compounds and figuring out what you, you know, what people can use next and how to test for it. And I mean, that, that's a huge industry in itself, you know? That, that must be... A lot. I think there's like forty grand or something in each of those tests. All of a sudden, at I've, one stage, I don't know. Like, obviously, I fucking look at a bit of fitness shit, workout videos, and shit like that on my Instagram. But <coughs> excuse me, the the advertising that I've been getting lately, and I feel like Instagram is getting more advertising of late. Um, fucking has been a lot about Psalms. Have you ever heard of Psalms? They're like nah. some sort of uh, like version of steroids that apparently isn't isn't as bad as steroids but it's like you know they bind it's like selective androgen fucking binding receptor or some shit but all of a sudden it's like all of these different companies like oz labs fucking oz muscle like all of these different companies advertising the same sort of like testosterone boosting products without Doing your testes in and all this sort of shit. I'm like, what? What is this all of a sudden? Sounds it seems fishy. Like, I wouldn't yeah. want to be the guinea pig on yeah, that man. Just absolutely. kiss your liver goodbye. It, it's like this little brown, <laughs> little brown bottle, fucking oral, oral steroid. Like it's fucking, am- oh yeah, like it's amyl. Yeah, and it could mm. could be anything. Could absolutely be anything. Like that that supplement industry is completely, completely unregulated. You know, so it, it's like there's no, you know. FDA sort of type, you know, Food and Drug Administration, don't touch it. Supplements are just effectively unregulated. They can just do whatever the fuck they want, just put whatever they want in it and, 
just mm. label it up, you know, as long as it doesn't, you know. There must be some sort of standard people. because there's shit that like, you know, you wouldn't be able to buy online and get it through customs and shit like that, I'm sure. That's true. It would definitely have compound, like, well, whatever it was, like products in it that um, that you weren't allowed to get into mm. Australia. Like straight testosterone and probably all those old school steroids <coughs> and stuff like that You would show up in a test. I can't even get um, hemp force protein <laughs> from uh, on it out here because of it's on... The hemp y- laws. Yeah, the, the hemp laws. Or really? Whatever, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. It's a protein non, powder. Non-psychoactive protein Non-psycho- powder. Non-psychoactive Illegal. protein powder. <laughs> like silly. Absolutely silly. But we've... You need, to, need to get on that little nog shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he was on, only on a diuretic though. Was he? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, Just trying yeah, to shred up a bit. Yeah. yeah. What would a e- diuretic e- either, do? Either that, or cut weight. Yeah. 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 Just make you piss heaps and stuff like yeah. that. Is it? Yeah. Is that sort of the emphasis? Spend a lot of time on the shitter and stuff. Yeah. Is that what a diuretic? That's what I yeah. imagine when I imagine that. Yeah. And I think you just sweat more and you have a higher, like higher mm. heart rate. I got that. All um, that sort of stuff. Clean butyrol yeah. and stuff like that where it just jacks your heart rate up and raises your body temperature a little bit so you start shredding. Yeah. I remember stuff like that. Uh, we wild, we popped, popped a, a guy on a drug test on a site for clean but- – not we didn't weren't test him for clean but- butyrol, I must say, but we popped him for like amphetamines and um, and speed and stuff like that and he like admitted what while I was like having the discussion with him about, you know, getting popped, um, the – the bit about being on Clem oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even Trying. know what it was. I was just like, what's that? And he's like, oh, it does, you know, it's this steroid that does this, Trying this, and this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trying to shred up. Yeah. yeah summer was just coming, this man. Big meathead scaffolder. Yeah. Just yeah, <laughs> no, doing, <laughs> doing a bit of ice and fucking Clem on, yeah. the, on the extreme shred. Yeah. Oh, exactly. my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I've started working in the. Um, oh, I've started forti- doing for- Fortitude <laughs> Valley this week. Um, changed changed offices. That office and, uh, looks sweet. Yeah, mm. it's nice. It's a sick building. Um, but uh, fuck, man, being back in the valley is <laughs> eye opening experience. Feel. Not that I've worked in there before, but spent many a night out in uh, in my youth. <laughs> and um, man, all of the businesses on Brunswick Street are basically just vacant and shit. There's yeah, the, the RG and that bar next to it, but there's basically nothing else there. Yeah. It's like this weird ghost town, but really? still heaps of junkies, man. I, I did, I like to get out on my lunch break and do a walk, even if it's just through the city sort of thing, get out like just of the office and um, doing a loop there, man. You go past many people who are, you know, either jonesing for a fix or are, currently under the effects of their yeah. last hit. Really? Fucking just blatant, you know? Missing teeth, the sunken face, the like scabs on the skin and shit like that. Cool. Ice is just everywhere you look, man. Mm. Like it's fucking heavy, eh? Yeah, it's crazy when you think of that. You, because you live in your own little bubble and, you know, associate with your own friends. So you don't really think there's that probably bigger scene of it, but there would be a big scene of heroin junkies and – Ice heads and all that sort of stuff that would that would hang around, you know, in Brisbane, mm. you know. Catching and in, public transport is a big eye opener. Yeah, that's yeah. that's and that would be a lot of wherever you go. Absolutely, sort of thing, you know what I mean. And it, and you know what else is synonymous? Fucking everywhere. It, the second it goes dark, that shit increases. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. less during the daytime. Everybody scurries off into little hidey holes and shit. But as soon as that fucking sun goes down, man, shit starts to get weird. Yeah, and that's it. It gets it. progressively weirder as it gets dark. Yeah. And that's, that's what, and that's, <laughs> so yeah. simple, but it's fucking it is, it is, true. Right? You're absolutely right. Because, I mean, it is. that's why they put security guards on late night trains and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm. It's because that is dodgy obviously shit. when dodgy shit's happening. It's like you know? that Chris Rock joke is like, you know, they should have time limits on fucking <laughs> yeah. ATMs because he's like... <laughs> When was the last time you ever took three hundred dollars yeah. out at two a.m. for something positive? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you know, it's, it's fucking, fucking so true. Yeah. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got uh, we got the fight night this this weekend, and then we got yep. two fourteen at the first or second week of November. Mate, there's a card two seventeen. Sorry, there's a me. UFC card every weekend between now and Christmas. Ooh. They miss one weekend, I think. Really? They miss one weekend. Oh yeah, home run. Home run. Finishing the year. Coming strong. The one this weekend, I must admit, I don't know a whole lot about this Darren Till, but apparently he's fucking the real deal. And he looked mean in the fucking standoffs, man. Did he? Yeah. yeah. See, he I, looked I, like I, I haven't seen bang. a lot of this this week. I must admit, like the coverage, but um, fire it up. I'm keen to see that. Cerrone v Darren Till. Yes, I mean it, everybody's expecting Cerrone to to win, obviously, because you know he's just a much bigger name, has fought much bigger names himself, much more experienced, you know, but. 
yeah, you, you just never know with these young bucks coming up, you know. Mm. Like, I mean, and Cowboy definitely does have a, a tendency to get overwhelmed early in the first round. So he any, can. any anything is possible. But look at him, Robbie swarmed him in that Robbie, last fight. Yeah, that was a he fun weathered fight. that storm well. He really did. He really did. Not many have been able to hang in and weather that storm exactly with, with Robbie. Yeah, and Robbie obviously came out with that as his, he you know, knew. focus game yeah. game plan. You know, For he was sure. coming out there. Look, look, let me. I've got the cardio to go three, but I'm mm. just going to put a real hard sort of first two and a half, three minutes on him. Robbie just to can, see. Uh, and only because he's so experienced and smart, he can take rounds off Robbie at times, man. Where he can he can weather the storm and not engage nearly as much, and then yeah. come out where he he won two rounds to one. He's in tall that, in that fight. It's Darren Till is he an Englishman? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Looks rangy, man. Cowboys had it all before. Yeah, he's, exactly. Yeah, we're he's gonna like, fight, motherfucker. I don't so care. Nonchalant. He's fucking yeah. just impossible not to like. We're just getting in a fist fight. Look at this dude, man. He's broad. He looks rangy, eh? Got a sword on him as well. His trackies. <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, man. I think. Uh, fuck. Yeah, look at Cowboy. Cowboy is Cowboy so fucking lot. active, man. Yeah. He's got to be the most active guy on the roster. Yeah, be taking there. a couple of L's. Now. He's got like twenty five fights in the UFC. This this might be his twenty fifth fight, I think. Look out! Yeah, absolutely. Coming but, off two losses in a row, too. But still, like you know, other than the, well, the Mars Vidal fight, Mars Vidal definitely got the better of him for sure. Didn't he? I, I expect Cowboy to come back strong here. Yeah. I, I'm I'm picking Cowboy every day of the week to stop him, and he'll probably, I dare say, submit him. Right, yeah, get the the Englishman. Yeah, I reckon he'll look to look to sort of get him get him so down he if he can, because Cowboy in his re- Till's fifteen and I. Cowboy in all of his recent fights has showed way better takedowns. You yeah. know, like I mean, he actually shot on Robbie. He, you know, like I mean, he he's got good takedowns when he chooses to use them, and I think he'll choose to use them here, and and he'll go for the submission. It's for a twenty sure. twenty four year old too. He's young till he is. Maybe twenty four going. Fuck! I've got the fight against Cowboy. Like to yeah. his mates at home. Mm. Yeah, that would mm. be unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. Did you have one of your like real close homies in your group was like. Fuck it, it's it's cowboy. Absolutely, that, that, I've got Tony Ferguson. Absolutely, like, no one ooh. you've ever heard of there, though. Mm. You know, like on that record. That's right. I mean, so, sorry, buddy. You like uh, four fights in the UFC? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which counts so for a lot. A majority yeah, draw a against Nicholas Dolby, but that is 2015 as well. So yeah, loves a decision though, Till. So yeah, yeah. exactly, Cowboy's more of a finisher for sure. So it'd be it'd be interesting. Cowboy always brings the fight out of people. Mm. So you know, it doesn't really matter if. Till's gone to three rounds before, you know, like Cowboy makes people fight. Who else is on that card? Um, the uh, Polish bird. Carolina. Carolina Kov- Kovalkiewicz. And um, Connor's boy. And, oh, yeah, uh, Artem. Andre yeah. Touchy oh, Feely. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's a good fight. That That's is a, a, cool a real little good fight, man. Both of those guys is that can on the try. prelims? Smile and Sam Alvey's coming back. Coming off a win against Rashad Evans, yeah. smiling Sam. He's active as fuck, man. Have a look yeah. at uh, his record. Is thirty one and nine. Mm. Yeah, me. that's yeah. a good record, man. Yeah, absolutely. Look at Artem, 14, 13, 14, and one. 13. How does he have a gro- like a gig in the UFC with a record like that? He's in Connor's squad, man. Yeah, exactly. That's he, crazy. He Thirteen w- L's, man. Need to W here. Coming off that. Uh, Real tough fight against Cub Swanson. Where he hung in for five rounds against Cub, but you could tell Cub was on another level. Yeah, right. I don't think I saw that one. But yeah, I mean, imagine having a UFC guy that had won- lost as many fights as he had won. Mm. That'd be crazy. If he takes an L this weekend, that's exactly what it'll be. Yeah, I'm, I'm 14 and 14. So how on earth did he... He must have gone on a win streak late. Must have. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he has got some top, when, top, uh, top names at 45. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, another the fight return of the dragon, October twenty ninth. Yeah, Fuck yeah, you're right. With they're stacking them towards mm. the end of the se- uh, year. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't wait to see Mashita back after. Uh, is that at eighty five? No, that's at two o. Oh, oh no, eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah. yeah, good to see. Good to see. Leota looks good at that weight. Jim Miller staying active. Yeah, always. Who's he got there? Francisco Trinaldo. Oh, Trinola. that's not an easy night out Dude. at all. At all. Jim Miller will submit him, man. a fucking war. I reckon Jim Damian Miller will Damien Meyer versus Colby King, Col- oh. Covington. That's a mismatch if ever I've seen it. But then again, everybody against Meyer other yeah. than Woodley was. Yeah, he's just going to tie him down to get back in that yeah. L column for Damien. Yeah, exactly. Just going to be like a serpent on him. Just Shit. like... Chaos what? is 12 and 1, man. 
Chaos Covington. Ranked number eight. Yeah. 170. Yeah, fuck. so many good fights. What happens up, with the man? one one seventy? You you boys were saying fucking Woodley's been calling out the winner of the Bisping um, GSP fight. Yeah, he wants to just get I his hope, name. I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, me too. Yeah, no, well, don't no, we all? No. Don't we all? Who are you boys picking for um for the winner out of GSP and Bisping? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's been funny watching some of their lead up and shit. Bisping's a champion, but he can't help but play the heel all mm. the time, mate. Eh? Just constantly chatting and shit. It's a real interesting. I'm fight, gonna uh, I'm gonna go Bisping, man. I yeah, think I think Bisping. Four year too. layoff for George. Yeah, is massive, man. Who, know, who knows how active he's been? But um, an interesting one out of that was, um, you know, that Christoph Manu. Uh, he's one of his mentor was GSP's mentor coming up. Like he's been in his corner a bunch, just like this hard ass French Canadian like martial artist. And uh, he's come out in the press. And I don't know if they've had some sort of personal falling out or they're not working together anymore, but Christoph was like, I've seen his sparring and shit like this and whatever, uh, what I saw there has me worried for him and thinking, why is he actually doing this? Really? His own mentor had actually said that about George when he saw him in there getting rounds in. So four years is a long time if he's there. Granted, he's looked after himself. In that time, exactly. he's not just yeah. taking four years off. He's a phenomenal athlete, mm. one of the greatest of all time. But Bisping's been really active, really on, active. On the other hand, really so active. Yeah, he won't have that ring rust. And I know Bisping can go twenty-five really hard minutes every time. Yeah, Bisping's cardio is is unquestionable. Yeah, and and jo- George is got incredible cardio too when he's in fighting. Mm. You know, when he's in proper five round shape. But you know, he is is not going to come in in five round shape. The only thing I worry about is. If you look back to say a fight like Bisping v Tim Kennedy, where Tim Kennedy was able to get him down and wrestle him, yeah, George at eighty five with that really good MMA wrestling, like yeah, George, name a better MMA wrestler than no. than George, probably like, the even, greatest even, MMA wrestler. Yeah, that's right, of all even time. someone like Yoel, who's been to Olympic Games and stuff like that, GSP put it together in his weight class in his division. His like his takedowns were better than no, no than, one than no, anyone. People yeah. knew. That they were his go to, you yeah. know, like people. So people just trained with really high level wrestlers and trained takedown defense over and over and over and would still come out and just get taken down, not like every now and again. But every mm. single time, you know, like like your Tiago Alves and your yeah. Dan Hardys and your Koscheck, B, BJ like, Penn, he took Koscheck yeah. down at will, yeah, you know. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. he took John Fitch down at will. That's right. You know, he like did. I mean, he, he's just you know a, a, on another level. So does that yeah, transition to the fight? Is that where I think that's where George wins I it think if so. he's gonna? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think so, Dan? I think so. I think he gets it done in in usual GSP fashion with that sort of lay and pray. Some would argue. Um, I mean, definitely. I would hope that. to see some some damage, like if he does hold that top position for a long time, mm. um, and not just not just grind it out on points. But um, man, yeah, he's been in some fucking wars. That that war with Car- Carlos Condit was one for the ages, man. He Wasn't got he it? got fucking belted up in that. The he, elbows he'd, that he'd he had. Been, he'd been off a long layoff for that fight as well. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Bisping yeah. Cop, cop is that, that card is fucking stacked. That Bisping left, is left owning him in the press conference. Yeah, too. George oh, yeah. is just a no- Bisping, yeah. George is just nice. a nice yeah. guy. Like yeah. that's the problem. Is are you intoxicated? Yeah, are you intoxicated? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's like, is that all you got, George? You used that last Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> you also used that suit last Thursday too. You look like a fucking high school maths teacher. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're paying you good money. Get another fucking suit. Yeah, just owning him, and he's there like, eh, this. Guy like, uh, yeah. George, man, and, and G- George would just because I mean he's admitted to that you know he was the shy kid at school that got bullied and all that sort of stuff. So even though he is a badass, you know, like yeah, he wouldn't really have a to, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't really have a response to any he's of that not sort of stuff. Being the Connor in the room, yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. picking fights backstage of every nah, card, and yeah, shit like exactly, that. it's yeah. not George's yeah. guy. The verbal, the verbal fight is a fucking is a fun one before the actual it is. fight. Yeah, it no, really that's is. That's where we'll miss Bisping when he goes because he he knows how to hyper fight and sell a fight and. He does that in his own head almost to create a beef. Yeah. So he, he's more into it. Like, yeah. no, fuck this guy. We're going we're gonna to fight or get himself really, really rolled yeah. up and just squash it instantly when they instantly. shake hands. And that's the best part about it. He's squashed every single beef he's had, basically, yep. except with Rockhold because there's a rubber match there. And yeah, he knows exactly. It. Everyone else, he's like, yeah. he'll just shake hands and what's done is done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. that post-fight press conference between... 
Bisping and Rockhold after he after Rockhold lost, man, that was fucking hilarious. That was <laughs> definitely not like beef squashed at all. That nah. was just a, still as antagonistic you had a few as, as the, yeah. You'd, you'd had a Bisping's beers there with his point. like pluggers and his singlet and drinking a couple of beers <laughs> on stage. With his belt? Like. Yeah, <laughs> Rockhold's just like fuck this guy. <laughs> Hey, but you want right. the belt, Luke? No, you can't have it. Like, <laughs> baiting him that sort of hard. Like, you want to touch it? Like, no, no, no. Actually, it's uh, after he's oh, just been knocked oh, out, he's been stopped. Like, yeah. Not class, not, not gracious in, <laughs> uh, yeah, no. in victory or defeat. Yeah. But then he even uh, looks back and he's like, said that oh, the next dick. day he's like, oh fuck, I was a dickhead. Yeah. he said he said during the interview, he's like, I'll probably regret That's some of this right. shit tomorrow. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> But he was just buzzed on the beer. He, he's cloud nine. Buzz, he's yeah. notorious for that, though, man. Like losing his head. Like, do you remember when he um he spat on um Jorge Rivera's fucking Jorge Rivera's <laughs> corner? Like after after beating him, like That's right. pretty much stopped Jorge Rivera like in the second or third round, and then just like went over yeah. and like spat through the cage. Because like, they made on, it, they on, made a video about him on YouTube, yeah. like fucking like fully mocking him on YouTube. So he not <laughs> he knocks it, stops him, and goes and just it slags spits on his corner. Yeah. Uh, like, and yeah. didn't get in the shit for that. Apologized man. immediately, pretty much like you know, like straight away afterwards though. But yeah, that that's a, a brutal stoppage too, man. He's just taking shots, and and that's what Bisping's going to do well is you know really pour it on him, pour it on him when he's Absolutely you know gassed. Absolutely, he will. Far out. <laughs> no, I was trying to bring that up then, but we got about six minutes of. Uh, yeah, lead Jorge in, Rivera lead highlights. Lead. <laughs> <laughs> and I just couldn't be fuck searching it. Yeah, what exactly. was that uh, video you were telling? Me? Oh, I just got a little shock off the mic, son. Damn. What was that video you were saying? Is it this uh, Harvey Weinstein? Uh, Howard Howard Stern. Howard um, Stern. Yeah, that's makes right. Makes really really inappropriate em- comments to Emma Bunton, like Baby Spice, in this radio interview. It surfaced after the Weinstein thing, where they're like. Now that we're at it, why hasn't ever, anyone ever brought this up? Like, have a have a little gizzard of this. Howard Stern's shockingly sexist and suggestive oh, interviews no, degrading Emma Bunton resurfaces online. Oh, you'll have to pinpoint the exact moments though then. Ah, uh, right. 15 minutes worth. That's going to be tricky. Is that who Howard Stern is? That yeah. guy with the black hair? Yeah, bro. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. And he only do, is he a former like rock star or he just yeah, yeah right who, who did I uh, can't can't yeah, think of that off okay. the top of my head but that's his look talk, how she's sitting he's talking about how he's getting a sidewinder where they're sitting there and <laughs> oh, oh really yeah, like, oh shit. She Explain looks so to everybody at home what a sidewinder is for go us. Go to mate. Baby Spice AVI. Just have a look at that 126 one and see how that goes. That might be like a pinpoint moment. No, I was quite shy actually when I was young. Boys don't care about that. Kids will be shy. Oh, really? Fuck, imagine getting a guest on and subjecting him to this shit. Oh, that's ridiculous. So old and crazy. Oh, that's weird. How, what, what year is this? Oh, nine. Published anyway. <laughs> Jesus, far out. Did he get in trouble for that shit? No. Right. <laughs> what a freaking creep. Creep oh, central. Is. Yeah. Well, creep Howard Stern central. gets a bunch of fucking. Um, Prostitutes or like definitely heaps of porn stars on and interviews them and like right. it's a pretty pretty X rated show. Like yeah. I mean he's he he is who he is. He fucking you know makes no excuses for who he is. But um, 
Yeah, I'm surprised he gets airplay in such a conservative media as the States, you know. Yeah, the, the, yeah. I don't know what, don't, he, what he's on or... I think it's like NPR radio or something. Like serious or something like... Some yeah. sort of radio yeah, channel, radio. but 330, peop- th- 330 million people, someone's going to listen to him. Mate. Really? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I do in think the, the population. Oh, wise sorry. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I do yeah. think pulling three thirty mil an episode over there. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, I do think that that style of fucking media, you know, radio is is on the way out, and and things like podcasts we're seeing are the new yeah, media for sure. Know? That that canned sort of segmented cut cut to this, cut to that. You know, people just with their fucking you know stereotypical radio voice and just mm. robotic. I think people want, you know, people want the deeper sort of stuff where they can get stuck into, you know, yeah. the meat of a conversation rather than con- continuously interrupted by ad breaks. I, and I, I, I just can't promo. stand, and and it would be difficult to to have to be like in that sort of, you know, format for a, a, a morning show every morning or whatever. Oh, I think but, about that all oh. the time. Like if, you know, when I see, a, I see a morning show on a screen at the gym or a cafe or something like that and I'm like, fucking hell, man, you know, I don't feel 100% every day. I, sometimes I go into work and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to talk to people today, you know. I'm just like, you know, not not feeling it. But in that position you don't have that option nah. you know if you're Carl, Carl Stefanovic you got to get up and be on yeah every, every yeah. single fucking day at the first thing in the morning whether you've had a huge night the night before whether fucking your grandma's just died exactly. you're on air son like yeah. get to get to make up at fucking 3 a.m or whatever and it is. I reckon you can sometimes tell when he is tired man because he oh, like Carl Stefanovic sure. looks gle- cleary eyed and looks you know like run down and stuff and you're like oh he looks tired to- he looks tired there like up up late at night doing mm, yeah. some heavy, heavy bag training and you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, no, martial artist. No, uh, yeah, I reckon he would train. I reckon he would train. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he looks like, <laughs> it looks like he'd look after it himself. Looks like he stays in shape. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, fam. Well, uh, uh, yeah. we've done a, a solid little hit out here for our Friday night. We covered a few topics and uh, we're coming at you again in the next couple of weeks. We've got somebody lined up for... Next week, maybe mm. is that confirmed? We'll have to uh, we'll have to revisit that. But um, yeah, we'll aim to keep bringing you some content throughout the year, getting closer to that fucking 2017 Christmas special, fam. So that's gonna Peace. be big. I'd like to have a, a, some sort of yearly break up or something. Yeah, Try yeah. And get a session together, a pub session with all return guests for a pub session or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah, that'd be alright. Chuck right. a microphone in the room, try and record it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be an absolute disaster Just to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> an hour of fucking pub noise. Chen <laughs> It's the new thing. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters. Talk soon. Peace.